Oh, hello there. Yes, well, that sound of chickens coming home to roost, or perhaps darkest before dawn, or I don't know, whatever other cliches you want to come out with. Yes. Anyway, whilst things look dreadful, there are always signs of optimism and hope. I would argue that part of the reason we're seeing what we're seeing on the streets of Britain is because a lot of social commentators in the UK are not getting what they want. Okay, because the script was supposed to be, if you like, that um, the Front National would have won in France. And this would have had a decisive effect in terms of tipping the scales of uh, the far right, if we can call them that, in Britain. And this would have led in neatly to Trump being re-elected without all of that messy stuff, with having a DEI, a low IQ DEI candidate, along with some communist bloke now, dreadful, elected in November, at the same time as a beautiful, beautiful conservative female leader. Wouldn't it be perfect? Or maybe one of those nice Christian guys like Jenrick. Yes, would have been perfect, you see, and it's all gone wrong, mainly because, of course, of you lot, because, let's face it, you wouldn't follow a script if it was put in front of you. You bad people. Anyway, moving on from that, there were, as well, breaking in the ranks yesterday. I was rather pleased with Tim Montgomery. Not a guy I particularly agree with politically, but at least it's one of the grown-ups in the room. Um, writing this, there is something really sulfurous about Matt Goodwin. Incendiary views, su suspect opinion polls, massive self-opinion, self-obsession. British public life would be so much better without him. Yes. Now, I would agree with that because one of the problems with people like Matt and Dougie Murray and all of the other self-styled intellectuals is that they spew venom, but in a nice kind of very, very public school way, which makes it all acceptable. We'll come back to that notion in a bit. So yes, uh, Dan Hodges as well. Again, not someone I would necessarily agree with, but someone who's pragmatic and can see things for how they are and has an eye on the future rather than just the immediate monthly end of dividends like most of them do so he um also had got into what might be called a twitter spat with um <laughs> with matt goodwin yesterday um link down below but he put this up okay let's test this you have consistently said we should condemn and have specifically branded what you have called islamo fascism and the woke left should we also condemn and specifically brand far right violence if we want to ensure consistency and then matt basically squirms a little bit because yeah yeah, he sits very much on one side of the fence and goes on shows where he won't realistically be challenged. I know he did go up in front of Aaron Bastani, but I don't think he's ever going to do that again. It's all GB News. It's all the same with all of them. Yeah, all of them. All of the pseudo-intellectual, rather nasty, scientific racists, they probably think of themselves, are doing that. Which perhaps, maybe, just brings us neatly to everyone's least favourite person in a bow tie who isn't called Tucker Carlson, Rafe Hale Mancou, who's um, gone on holiday for a bit. Nice that he's out of the country. That will mean that people won't mistake him for a bad person on the street, which will be handy. Anyway... Managed to write the one of the biggest loads of tosh that I've seen in a long period of time. You need to bear in mind that Rafe Hadelmenku is a widely respected historian, despite the fact that he hasn't actually written anything historical. He was involved in Burke's Peerage, which effectively means listing things in terms of European pseudo royalty who give birth. Don't really call that a historian. Anyway, he managed to, because he's in Poland, wrote this. OK, so let's have a quick look at this. In the Cold War, Central Europe sought to emulate the West. OK, today the West could learn from Central Europe. OK, meaningless phrase, but whatever. Low immigration, civility, beauty, national identity. OK, maybe. OK, Poland is perhaps Europe's most culturally homogeneous nation. And the feelings of safety and social cohesion is palpable. You're in cities, you're in European cities with low ethnic diversity are always the safest. Mm. I think that Rafe would actually think of certain European cities which are actually reasonably cohesive in terms of their populations as being very dangerous places for him to be. But that's another story, right? So, just briefly on that point, well, um, 
Unfortunately for Rafe, what I would have to say is the reason why Poland and various other countries in that part of the world have such um, homogeneous populations is because, well, at the end of the Second World War, they were ethnically cleansed. Now, I've got a link down below to Wikipedia, but if I want to recommend a book, I would, can recommend Savage Continent, um, which is a blindingly good read about history a lifetime ago, which Rafe knows nothing of, okay? The Second World War didn't end nicely. It ended with an awful lot more bloodshed. And a lot of those countries that were badly affected by both the Soviets and the Nazis, but in particular the Nazis, extracted a great deal of revenge and expelled an awful lot of minorities. Not just ethnic Germans, but an awful lot of other ones as well. There was an awful lot of fighting, and that continued into the Ukraine, which is perhaps one of the reasons we have issues there today. Anyway, yeah, it might have been worthwhile if, if Rafe had perhaps actually read that. Or maybe he could go to one of those big northern ports and wonder why there are no Germans there. Yeah, ain't Danzig anymore, mate, is it? Anyway, yes, moving on from that, Poland's GDP is forecast to surpass the UK's by 2030. Its economy is booming without the mass immigration we are told is fundamental to Britain's economic growth. Well, no. No, I don't think anyone has told you it's fundamental. It was just convenient for Osborne to keep the population booming by 2% a year to pretend that we had growth during austerity, something that you and your political outlook would have applauded. Moving on. Meanwhile, after years of unparalleled levels of migration, the UK economy stagnates with low growth and low productivity. Funny that. No, it isn't funny, Rafe, because the type of economics that you and your lovely friends at the New Economic Forum and all your lovely friends at the other nasty think tanks at Tufton Street and all those other dubious American-backed organisations... That's what you get after 40 years of neoliberalism. It's the same thing you're still pushing now, mate. Your job, basically. Anyway, moving on, you can read the entire bit for yourself, but let's just do this for the sake of completeness. For decades, their history was rewritten and their beliefs and worldviews subverted. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah, it was attacked by fascism that had to be got rid of at great cost. That's what that's about, Rafe. It, only, it seems only when we lose our fundamental freedom and our sense of national identity that we truly appreciate them. Well, maybe, yes. But, you know, the Poles were let down by us during the Second World War. In many ways because Churchill decided to scribble a number on an envelope, quite literally. Yeah? read more about that you can read about you know you can read about that end of the second world war i don't think rafe wants to though because it wouldn't give him the right facts anyway last bit another notable difference between the west and central europe is the latter's desire to beautify the cities and public spaces poland and hungary's vile brutalist and other communist era buildings are being demolished and remodeled in traditional styles built to last for the ages meanwhile we continue to blight our cities with sit and our city centers with monstrous carbuncles designed to last no more than a few decades yes that's allowing the market economy to flourish whilst people profit from land use Blue beauty flourishes, renourishes the soul of the nation, the city and the individual. Beauty improves social behaviour too. They get it, we don't. No, I get it, you don't. You don't understand economics, and you don't understand history, like all of those other people around you rave. Still, never mind, eh? Tomorrow is, well, not belonging to you. Enjoy. <laughs>